If you take a piece of white paper into different lighting conditions, it will be an objectively different color in each situation, but our brains are clever enough to make us feel like it's still white. It's still the same piece of paper, after all. To match our experience, cameras have to do this too, balancing the colors of an image so that a white object looks white under a given light, or a red object looks red, and so on. And the typical unit to measure the color of a light is the Kelvin, which is weird because Kelvin is a unit for measuring temperature, not color. What temperature and the color in a photograph have to do with each other comes down to history and physics. The color of photographic lighting is given in Kelvin because photographic light sources almost all used to be hot glowing things, like the sun or incandescent light bulb filaments. And the color of a hot glowing thing changes in direct relationship with its temperature. As objects heat up, they start to glow, first red hot, then orange hot, yellow hot, white hot, blue hot. So hotter light is bluer, and colder light is redder. It's worth noting this scientific fact often leads to confusion since we talk colloquially about warm light meaning cozy orange light, and cool light meaning bluer light, even though warm feeling orange orange light actually comes from objects with colder physical temperatures. I mean, still hot enough to glow red or orange hot, but not white hot or blue hot. Incandescent light bulb filaments are roughly around 3000 Kelvin, and the temperature of the sun's surface is roughly around 6000 Kelvin. And yes, it's 6000 Kelvin rather than 6000 degrees Kelvin. With Kelvin, you don't say degrees. Anyway, incandescent light bulbs and the sun aren't the only two kinds of lights. Even before fluorescent lights and LEDs and lasers and so on came around, there were incandescent lights of different literal temperatures and therefore different colors, ranging from around 2700 to 34. Kelvin. Candlelight is closer to 2000 Kelvin. Daylight can actually range from around 4500 Kelvin to above 10,000 Kelvin, depending on whether it's direct sun, or shade, or cloudy, or partially cloudy, or what time of day it is, or if you're outside the Earth's atmosphere altogether. The point is, the light sources that a camera encounters are typically anywhere from around 2000 to 10,000 Kelvin, and the camera or film needs to account for those. Except it's not all about Kelvin. Color isn't one-dimensional after all. Not all light sources are objects whose color comes purely from being hot. Think neon lights, or fireworks, or fire flies, or fluorescent light bulbs, or LEDs. In addition to warm versus cold, light can also be shifted towards the green side of things or the magenta side of things, as you can see from a full chromaticity diagram. From a practical perspective, color temperature is also reversed in a camera from the way you'd expect. When you dial in the color temperature setting on a camera, you're actually telling the camera to compensate for lights with that temperature. If you tell your camera to color balance for a very blue 10,000 Kelvin source, it will be expecting very blue light and therefore decrease the amount of blue in the image. Likewise, if you tell your camera to color balance for a very yellow-orange 2500 Kelvin light, it'll increase the amount of blue in the image to compensate for the yellowness, which leads to another potential source of confusion. Setting the color temperature setting of a camera too high means the camera decreases the blue enough to get a very blue light back to white. But since the light's not that blue, the correction ends up going past white, resulting in an overly yellow image. Here's what that looks like in practice. And setting the color temperature setting in a camera too low results in an overly blue image. That is, high color temperature camera settings often lead to yellow images, and low temperature settings lead to blue images, even though high color temperature lights are blue, and low color temperature lights are orange. This seeming paradox arises because the color temperature setting in a camera isn't setting the color temperature of the image. It's telling the camera how to compensate for the color temperature of the lighting and get back to white. Lights have colors. Cameras have color shifts. Color temperature in cameras should really be called color temperature compensation. Or maybe we should ditch temperature altogether and just call it, what color are your lights? Because it's all about trying to get an object to look the color that object typically looks to human eyes, independent of the color of the light falling on it. It's just a quirk of history and physics that the color of lighting was first determined almost exclusively by the temperature of the light source. And even now that it isn't, we still, for some reason, use temperature to talk about color. Okay, you watched the end of this video, which means there are good odds you're the kind of person who would like this video sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts, a method proven to be more effective than just watching videos alone. And they have new courses on AI large language models like ChatGPT and on programming in Python. To sign up for Brilliant for free and get 30 days of full access to all of their courses, go to brilliant.org slash minutephysics or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription for all of Brilliant's content, including the new courses they add all the time. Again, that's brilliant.org slash minutephysics, and thanks to Brilliant for their support.